What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Spoilers! Mario Sith, Iris Ohm, Christopher Oldacker Jr., Reed Rudder, Riftingard, James Moyner, Ace Demodome, Hayoka, E.E. E. Trueborn, Nat, Priya Dali, Noah Barnhart, Nathan Kirkham, Bat Out of Hell, Gabriel Savarit, Daniel Metcalf, Marshall Taylor, Toxie, Ram Femboy, The Jester, Dano25655, Marvoyus, Big Head Bus, Model CHP-3Y, Jessica Lacasse, Darius, Kian Boffy Nielsen, Sophie Leske, Quia Butler, Slindecker, Jur, Joseph Stalin, Fresh 2000, Tin Man 1996, Elijah Moffat, Nightwolf 99, Venture Svart, Ethan Bryan. And as always, I would like to give a shout out to our executive producers, The Gimster 101, Bevan Brummett, and Vincenzo. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, feel free to click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, feel free to click the link in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. Oh, I got a new tool. Wait, is this a... Oh my gosh, dude, I can melt through metal now. Yay! Any upgrades available? Hello, hello. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I got a full minute of blowtorch. <laughs> Now, I know what you're saying. Nate, have we done seen these before? Who yes and that? no. I've never seen these. Chad has never seen these before. No. I've seen these, but it has been a long time since <coughs> I've seen some Game Grumps animated. And uh, here's the thing. When we, when we reacted to these the first time, we censored these. Yep. We censored these because it was the early days of the channel, and I still believed in censoring stuff back then i mean certain times you got to <clears throat> i know there's one part in this i'm definitely going to have to especially if it has the part in it i we're gonna have to see but yeah these are uh these are game grumps anime you know how game grumps works right mm -hmm. they basically play a game and they improvise comedy bits over top yeah. of it so uh yeah i remember watching this game grump when it came out and i'm just like if they animate this, this is going to be fucking hilarious. And lo and behold, that's what they did. Oh, man. And uh, this one, and then the Subway one, which is the second one, I remember it as well. It was in uh, it was in Mario 64. You mm -hmm. actually hear the games that's being played in the background. Oh. So, I remember this conversation. They were on uh, the mountain where, you know, you had to chase the monkey up the mountain. Yeah. And when it stole your hat. Uh, that... They were on that level, and they kept falling, oh, and yeah. uh, Aaron decided, you know, to uh, basically... I think it was this... Was it this? I forget. Anyway, so we got three here. I missed, I hate Subway, and Laura Schmidt. Oh, no. The Laura Schmidt one just... it. I literally see it. I, you'll see whenever we get to it, but we're going to start out with a missed. So... A missed. Yeah, this is uh, this is Game Grumps uh, de-animated uh, by Brandon Turner. All three of these are by Brandon Turner. So let's go ahead and give these a watch. Let's see what Chad thinks. Here we go. Oh, you get up on screen. There we are. I said, here we go. Hey, I'm Grumps. I'm not so grump. And we're the Game Grumps. <clears throat> the wolf is causing the accident. I love her voice for some reason. Yeah, it's great. Everything was a okay till it showed up. <laughs> till it showed up and started blowing up buildings. <laughs> Something's protecting it. Something unnatural. He's, He's doing, doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty pun. Look, here's a letter from, here's a letter from it. <laughs> he says he's going to take us down. Mark my wolf. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> And then I fired again. And then I missed. And then I fired. And then I fired. And I missed. I missed both times. And then I fired. And I missed. This went on for several hours. And then I fired. And then I missed. 
and then I was out of bullets, and then I got sad. Yeah. I had a popsicle, and then I passed out in the snow. <laughs> and then I woke up, and then I reloaded, and then I fired, and then I missed. <laughs> I missed again. Wow. I fired. I hit something, but it wasn't what I was going for. So I guess I missed. I passed out again. I had another pop. I had a dream that I was firing something. I missed. No, I've lost it. Oh, so she could pick a snowball fight with him. I threw up a snowball at him. I missed. I packed another snowball into my gun. That's my secret weapon. I missed. Yeah, she's really something. I threw a snowball at her. I missed. I passed out. I woke up with a popsicle stick in my mouth. Yeah. Don't piss me off, woman. I'll take a swing at you. I'll miss, though. I guarantee you. And I'll take another swing, and I'll miss. I might have myself a popsicle. What you care for, a popsicle? Just don't bring it into the sound. Wow. So they were playing Nancy Drew at, at that point. They were playing a Nancy Drew game. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, well, people were questing to play games, and they just played this. And this guy just had that rough, gruff, like, frontiersman feel to him. Yeah. But... The shit he was saying made him seem like an inept, inept like he was inept. He's like, yeah, yeah. I had to re-, it's like I fired and I missed, and I shot at it and I missed, then I missed again. It's like you're not that good at your job, <laughs> then, man. It's like, it's, it's, and then they decided to just improvise on that. It's like I had to re- I was firing at something, but I missed. Shit's ridiculous. It just kept going and going and building. Yeah, they play off each other really well. Their improvisational skills with each other is just freaking awesome. Also, there's a part here at the end that we missed from the first time we watched it. Long story short, missed. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll let you get back to work. We have not been paying attention. I'll miss you. <laughs> I'll miss you. There you go. So, uh, then there's a... Uh, and now, we move on to the... I hate Subway. This one was censored. I remember when we put this one out. Mm. This one I, I did censor, and I... Again, sorry, not sorry. Anyway, this is, I hate, you, you ever been to Sub, uh, Subway and the person, the, I'm sorry, sandwich artisan mm-hmm. is making the sandwich and then they just, it's almost like they forget about your order and it just sits there and just gets cold after yeah. it's been out of the, you know, out of the uh, oven and then, uh, or they leave it in the oven too long when, you know, as soon as the thing goes off, they're supposed to open it up and get it out mm-hmm. because the residual heat can burn it make it and make it even worse it's just the minor inconveniences of it and then subway can be an interesting situation yes it can be especially if there's a lot of people in there oh yeah yeah it can get uh it can get very very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. very fast but yeah this one's another one that was uh this one was actually featured on the game grumps main channel Mm. uh once again animated by brandon turner uh, aka mr wazeldorp and uh, let's uh, go ahead and give it a watch. Here we go. I hate Subway. <laughs> Caught a big old case of the fuck yous. Had some of those the other day. <laughs> a big old case of the fuck yous. That's what I'm talking about. I get that every time I order a sandwich at Subway. <laughs> what do you mean? Just like, if, if there's somebody, but like everything about Subway is, is like infuriating. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's like the people in front of you take too long and like there's no drive through. That I, I hate when there's no drive through at the Subway. I don't know, I'm over-exaggerating, obviously, but Subway's like the land of inconveniences. Yeah, it's, I mean... Because it's like, it, oh, I have to be okay, and they're like, what do you want? And I'm like, uh, a sweet onion chicken teriyaki foot long on flatbread. And then they're like, what bread? And it's like, oh, flatbread. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they give me fucking take, and they're like, did you say foot long? Yes, I said foot long. Yeah, and like, you, you want cheese? cheese? You already have so many like bad experiences with the place <laughs> that like, it becomes self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Like the second you walk in, they're like, hi, how can I help you? And you're like, oh, <laughs> with this shit Shot again. This. <laughs> yeah, I have that with several places. And then it's like, you want cheese? And it's like, yeah, can I get um, Swiss cheese? And they're like, what kind? And it's like, fucking. <laughs> yeah, you know, the kind I just said. Uh. 
and then like toast it, and it's like, of course, to- you can't have the flatbread and not toast it. It's it's like spongy, gross, starchy ass fucking bread. It's made to be toasted. Wow. Of course, I want it toasted. And then they fucking toast it, and then they start helping the people behind you, and then it sits in the toaster for like 20 seconds longer than it's supposed to. Whoa. And you're like, I just want lunch! You are. And then they fucking take it out, and it's like another person, and then you have to fucking get a read on their personality. It's like, God damn it! And they're like, what do you want? And, it's like, and I'm like, uh, spinach. And then they just fucking destroy it with spinach. Just like an avalanche of spinach. And you're like, I want like five other things. You can't just fill it up with spinach and think that's all it's gonna be. Wow. Wow. And then you fuck it, and then you're like, onion. And they're like, okay. And they put like two onions on it. And it's like, more onion, please. <laughs> <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> and then when you like get some weird combination, like fucking, can I get mayonnaise and also sweet onion sauce? They finally they like throw up their eyeball, uh, eyebrows a little bit, like. Oh. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> and you're like, don't fucking judge me. I'll eat what I want. I can make my own sandwich. <laughs> don't fucking judge me. <laughs> wow. Next time on Game Rush. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Look at that little that little spinach monster yeah. right there. And there's And it's always like a huge inconvenience, you know? Like at least if the people working at McDonald's are like, man, fuck this, you don't have to look into their eyes and be like, I'm so sorry that you have to make my sandwich for me. <clears throat> yeah. Whereas there it's just like it, you're you're looking at them the entire time. You and when you're standing at the glass, you feel like you're almost like You're like, putting them to task. Yeah, it's, it's just like it's I don't just like, like it. I, I really... W- I, okay, I've been to a few but I love subways Subway, that have drive throughs you know? I've been to a few subways that have drive throughs Me too. There's one and in Kingsport. Yeah. I would much prefer that than the walk-in. Mm-hmm. Like, I can understand the walk-in. You know, it's like, oh, I'm on lunch. You know, I'll just sit here, enjoy my lunch break, have, you know, have a sandwich, and, uh, you know, watch some stuff on my phone. And then, uh, and then of course, uh, you know, when you go through the drive through it's just like, oh, I'll just sit in my car. And ordering ahead is a nightmare. Oh, yeah that like it's just pointless to even do that shit but anyway yeah and oh there's also another added part here at the end bro you just went fucking off on subway all you had to say was their food is gross (laughs) that's what i said (laughs) well so yeah i like on that one and then here we are with the last one lara schmidt so this one this one has a part in it if it's in it. I haven't seen this animated version of it. I've saw I saw the uh, G mod version. Okay. And uh, it it had the word in it. But if this has the word in it, I will definitely have to have to censor it. Anyway, mm. here we go. This is a uh, uh, Game Grumps animated Lars Schmidt. Welcome back to Game Grumps. Sponsored by Poopy Dicks. Yeah. Have, a, have a poopy dick in your mouth today with Poopy Dicks. <laughs> hey, Sounds I'm delicious. Gross. I'm not so gross. And we're the Game Grumps. Boop. Hello. Bam. My name's Rachel. I'm 38. And <laughs> I live in this city. What are you After years about? and years of crawling my way to the top, I finally found a job with Ford Modeling. But not as a model, as a receptionist. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 <laughs> what wow, are you doing? Wow. Is this a thing? I'm just like writing a sitcom. Oh, right yeah. <laughs> it's so like. That does sound like a sitcom. It's just like. It, yeah. Uh, like some kind of Sex I, in the City style yeah. show or something. Yeah, kind of. Or Bob's Burgers. Or Girls, that stupid show starring that stupid uh, Lena Dunham who admitted to <laughs> and got away with it. She admitted that, by the way. And she wasn't canceled. And so clearly hear it on TLC. Yeah. You might think that I'm a trendy, cool girl working at a modeling agency, but actually I'm one of the most nerdy girls you'll oh. meet. 
Star Wars is my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Laura. <laughs> After 31 years of living in South Arkansas, I finally moved up to the big city, Connecticut. <laughs> oh, it's disturbing. I found a job at Fart Modeling. Fart. <laughs> Where my brother gave me a job as a redundant. <laughs> wow. I like having sex. That's Good for the you. premise of this new sitcom from <laughs> HBO. Can you believe it? Say, I'm 35 <laughs> and single. <laughs> Every day I write to Johnny Depp, homie, he writes me back. Then one day he did. His letter read, Dear Lord, I quote, thanks. stop writing. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sending this letter. <laughs> Your friend. <laughs> I have a frame over my back. I was simply flabbergasted. <laughs> I was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I was raffle. Rolling on the floor, <laughs> loving. <laughs> I don't have three toes. <laughs> I was born without them. You gotta that sounds disturbing. Through that shit. When I was thirty-eight. I fucked a dude. <laughs> Whoa, Aaron, easy. Good, one. good on you, Aaron. <laughs> one more shot. One more shot. Just like I'm giving one more shot to love. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is it. The C stands for cool girl. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It stands for <laughs> In this new level sick on my cool <laughs> There it is. <laughs> wow. Look for this fall for my new sitcom. Ass fucks anonymous. <laughs> Damn, dude, You'll they stole my they stole my fanfic. <laughs> You'll laugh your pussy off. Uh, oh, my my name's Lauren. <laughs> I was I was married to Scott. It was a good guy, but he was boring. Now I just like a little excitement in my life. Watch this fun. Oh, this part too. I'm probably gonna have to sit for this. Laura Schmidt starring <laughs> two Oh no, not this one. Oh damn. Two, <laughs> two fingers in the air. I found out that my sexual desires were a little too adventurous. <laughs> Jesus. Today's episode of Too Much Bumping Around. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Starring me. I. <laughs> Watch as I progressively get more and more constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Until the 13th episode when all hell breaks. I was just a normal small. Oh, this one? This is the one. Tune in this summer on NBC's All Keep in mind, everyone, Dan is Jewish. His father was in the Mossad. So, I don't... Dan does this every now and again where he just goes on... He goes on one of them. Probably gonna have to censor that part. Yeah. <laughs> I was just a small town girl. Until I found an even smaller town. <laughs> Squeeze it out. There you go. I moved to Madagascar. <laughs> where my best friend was a sloth. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Oh, he's seizing out. <laughs> just, just play the character, man. I'm Laura from a small town, but I wanted something more in life. <laughs> this weekend on Dr. Seuss's Green Egg. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I think Dr. Seuss's family's gonna, the estate of Dr. Seuss is gonna sue somebody. Yeah, somebody's gonna get sued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I've come across plenty of sitcoms that are not verbatim like that, but are eerily similar. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, those basic premises, just like I said at the beginning, like Bob's Burgers, this guy and his family run a restaurant. I mean, restaurant sitcoms and bar sitcoms are, I mean, it, it's just... It's just like the framework within to tell your, you know, you you tell your story inside of it and that can be stereotypical, but the HBO thing, oh. my God, how many shows can they have about people like be living and that all being about them being fucking whores or doing some kind of Dude, really shit activity? Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's like you're not living hell, unless you're like. Even the show Ballers fell into that trap. Yeah. It's just like, it's just like, I'm living life as an agent. Late night Cinemax. Was, oh, God. It's what it turned into. Late night Cinemax with like high budget, uh, you know, production value, pretty much. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. There's just, it, those sitcoms that, those sitcoms and like friggin' shows that came on HBO, there were very few that stand the test of time. I, well, they were like the kings of it for a while. Yeah, and then the and then the well ran dry, and now they and now they they don't know what to put out. I, and they I saw this big nerd rant on how like even during the pandemic, like one of the most watched and most beloved shows was like a a bad memory a year later with Game of Thrones, like. During the pandemic, had it ended well, people would have watched it two and three times over again just to sit and have the time to watch it again. But it was talking about how how it, they butchered it so badly, even during a time where people had the ability to rewatch, you know, what was once the greatest show on television. It was. Now they just can't even it, watch the good parts anymore because it, of that. They can't because they know how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with me. I can't. I can't rewatch it again. I tried. I, I I sat through like the first three to four episodes, and I'm just like, it's ruined. This had such promise. This had such great aspirations. Yeah, there's part. There's places what the where fuck the fuck happened. There was places where they could have just stopped, and it would still be seen as the greatest show ever put on, like ever, oh. the greatest series ever. It would have ended after season six. And they and say say uh, the showrunners or one of the ma like two or three of the major cast members like passed away and they were not able to continue the show. It would be revered as one of the greatest what ifs. Like how like how will they end it? How will this? How, like, you, have I told you the story about how like I'll, I'll keep it short. The uh, creators of the show. What happened with them? No. Okay. <clears throat> Benny Off and Weiss, the two guys who spearheaded the production of the Game of Thrones TV series, yeah, they had a deal to uh, do, five, I think it was five or six seasons mm -hmm. with HBO. Right. And HBO, uh, during that time, weren't sure if Benny Off and Weiss would be able to make the show great. Now, much to a lot of people's surprise, including HBO's, the show not only becomes a pretty good hit, it becomes the biggest show in HBO history. Yeah. Period. No, no other show has gotten close. It was a phenomenon. Yes, it was. Yeah. And by the time season six, season five and six rolled around, uh, not, uh, it was a uh, Benioff and Weiss both told told each they both told HBO we're done. We don't want to do anymore. We're done after season six. You can find someone else to keep the show going. HBO literally gave them they gave them a blank check and said. We want you to stay. We want you to stay. Just list your demands. We'll do anything to keep you. And Benny Off and Weiss are just like, all right. Instead of doing, uh, instead of doing a planned ten seasons, instead we're cutting it down to eight seasons. And they're like, okay, all right, we can manage that. It's like also season seven will have seven episodes, and season eight will have six. It's just like, huh? So 
basically, they went from having uh, 40 episodes worth to tell a good story, cut down to 13. And all because they gave Benny Off and Weiss a blank check instead of handing the show off to people. There were two guys who wrote and directed some of the best episodes of the series. They had the uh, they had the opportunity to take over. Michael Nutter and uh, or it was David Nutter and Mike Sapochnik. They had the opportunity to take over if they would have just said something and talked to Benioff and Weiss, and if Benioff and Weiss would have gotten their heads out of their own ass, then maybe so. Maybe Sapochnik and Nutter would have taken over, and they would have carried it the rest of the four seasons with uh, Benioff and Weiss staying on as like executive producers or like associate writers yeah. who come in every now and again to like keep the narrative on track. But I can understand why uh, Benioff and Weiss wanted to quit because you know you do something for six seasons. And, it's a lot of time. And it's a time away from family. It's mm-hmm. time away from friends. It's time out of your life that you could be out there doing other projects that you are really passionate about. And when you're not in, when you're not into it anymore, you should not be forced to stay. And that's what I think happened. They, they pretty much were just like, all right, fuck it. We'll stay. We'll do two seasons, and we will absolutely run this fucker into the ground. And that's exactly what they did. They ran it into the ground. They were they instead of having forty episodes to play with and take the story in so many directions, have like these massive set pieces that they could play with over the span of an entire season. Instead, no, one of the biggest fights that have been hyped up for eight seasons done in one episode. One of the biggest conflicts ever to exist, or the biggest conflict in the show probably, resolved in one episode. Instead of being set out over a season. Or anything like that. Instead, nope, just that's resolved, that's resolved, that's resolved, that's resolved. Oh, by the way, this person that you all like has turned into an absolute bitch of a human being and is not worthy and redeemable in any way, and they're dead. Goodbye. That's the end of the that's the end of the story. Don't ask any questions. Thank you for your thank you for the paycheck. We're gone. What was it? The Jim Cornette. Thank you, fuck you, bye. Exactly. That's exactly what happened, dude. Yeah. And it just ugh, the opportunity. That just got squandered to no, to nowhere and back. HBO. Thank you. Oh, fancy a wiener. <laughs>